Welcome to Happily Ever After is just the beginning. Keeping your relationship not just together, but happy, and we mean truly happy, is part art and part science. You've come to the right place. Here's your host, Leslie Dorries. Most fairy tales end, and they live happily ever after. The same is true for most romantic comedies. The couple figuratively ride off into the sunset, all problems and drama solved, until they aren't. And I've always said that good marriages are boring from the outside. That's why you don't see television shows or movies where the marriage is center stage. Must-see TV requires drama. And that's who sets the example. Brad and Jennifer, Brad and Angelina, Kim and Kanye, and yes, Johnny and Amber. It's like trying not to look at the result of an accident that slows traffic on the highway. You don't want to live it, but if that's all you see, your chance of it doing better goes way down. And if you think that love needs constant drama, you will exhaust yourself and your relationship. And it's easier to end up in a toxic relationship than most people realize. And to help explain how this happens, and how to keep it from happening to you, I'm joined by psychoanalytic therapist and research psychologist, Dr. Frida Birnbaum. So Dr. Frida, thanks so much for being on the show and talking about what is always a timely topic. Absolutely, and it's uh, difficult. I'm listening to you uh, 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 talking about uh, relationships, uh, how we all want good relationships and how it's so difficult. Our parents have problems, and then their parents had difficulties. So we come from rows of dysfunction, and uh, we're trying to figure it out. And then what happens? You didn't even ask me the question yet. But <laughs> I just want to tell you. Don't fall asleep on me. But then what happens basically is that we try to make up for what we didn't get at home, and in an unconscious level, we pick someone similar to our opposite sex sex parent, and then uh, those innocent people who had nothing to do with it are put put into a corner, uh, and that's where the difficulty uh, most of the time begins. So can you just, let's back up a little bit, and can you explain, so obviously we are influenced by what we grew up with, what we see, and now we're on you know, second, third, maybe even a fourth generation divorces. So we're not necessarily getting a good example of what a good relationship looks like. But can you talk about what what makes up a toxic relationship? Well, when we have a, a couple uh, that uses that energy in a negative way, negative passion, uh, that they get the attention uh, from being bored, and there's volatile behavior, and then that volatile behavior becomes normal. So it starts uh, with often the abuser who feels inferior uh, and wants to put the other person and demean the other person down a few notches, and that Mm -hmm. toxic relationship continues because there's dependency issues that keep them together. Uh, with the violence and uh, with the anger and uh, with the dysfunction. And then they try to uh, boost their confidence by finding a partner that they can actually abuse. Uh, and that boosts their own self-image. And this is often the case with these toxic relationships. Well, and it's, you know, I mean, as you're describing this, I'm going, gosh, this this sounds really awful, and who wants to do this? But it's really interesting because I, I've written about this before. I was actually in an emotional abusive relationship when I was in college, and it, it took me years to realize that that's what it was. Um, you know, so I think that you know, there's always this idea that oh, that'll never happen to me. I'm, you know, but it, it we get into this these these relationships. You know, not intentionally. Nobody goes into a relationship wanting to feel bad. But then we end up in them, and we're not quite sure how we got there. And so um, you talked before about upbringing, and, you know, my, there was no abuse. Well, actually, that's not true. If I, if I look back at it, you know, there was no physical abuse in, in my parents' relationship. I'm not going to say there probably wasn't some, you know, there was certainly emotional immaturity in my parents' relationship. Um, 
but so how do we how do we recognize this? What you know, the, these relationships influence us without our even knowing it. I mean, you we you talk about marrying the opposite gender parents, and I have two older sisters, and we all married versions of my father. Unfortunately, my oldest sister got the worst version. <laughs> you know, so we do this, and so what is that about? Well, you know, there's a comfort level. Uh, it's familiar to us. It's something that uh, we feel we can uh, take care of. And most of all, it's important to know that, guess what? We're complimented by this because, oh, this person who's controlling me must really care so much about me that uh, I know that I can depend on this person. And it's usually most of the time, not in the case we're talking about here, uh, it's usually the male who's the dominant one. Mm -hmm. And the female who is the one who is interdependent. So you take it as a compliment, but really what's going on is that you're being controlled and you're being manipulated. And this guy is not showing love or this woman is not showing love and caring. Uh, she is showing or he is showing a sense of dominance over you. And then this goes into a relationship where eventually – you know, you wake up and say, hey, wait a minute, you know, I don't like this. I want to have my own mind. I want to do my own thing. And by that time, that happens often. You're too interdependent on each other. And then it's very difficult to leave, very difficult to start over because guess what? Most of the time you have this issue with other people. You just keep repeating it. And that's a problem. Yeah, it's fun. Right. Right. I mean, and it's interesting because, um, you know, we were talking when I mentioned Johnny Depp and Amber Heard, who were married for a very short period of time. Um, and, you know, he, I mean, his history, if you just go back and what's in the public, forget, you know, forget who knows what's going behind on behind closed doors, but the actual, you know, what showed up in the public was he has struggled with relationships for a, for a long time. And now this one has blown up and suits and countersuits and all, you know, he's basically destroyed his career. Um, you know, and so what, what is that all about? How, <laughs> you know, it's like, help me grapple with this. Because yeah, we look true. at these, yeah, look ahead, at these yeah, celebrities true. like yeah. these are the people that we want to hold up. And it's like, please stop that. <laughs> you know, we're, we're not looking you know, at the we, Kevin Bacon and Kira Sedgwick long-time successful relationships. We're looking at these relatively destructive ones. That's so true. You know, we have to remember they, these are characters they're playing. Uh, they have real lives and they're different people. They're great actors and they're very believable. So we have to be able to differentiate the two. Uh, and uh, look at uh, Bill Cosby, what happened with the family man. So, you know, go, getting back to this, and his father uh, left because his mother was so abusive. Uh, she was violent. She hit him. Mm. His father didn't speak up. And eventually, and it sounds as if when I'm listening to the court procedures, that the same thing is being replayed again. It's only, you know, a role reversal that she's mm -hmm. the one that Amber's the one that's actually violent and mm -hmm. physically violent. Uh, he's the one that's passive. Yes, he's a drunk, and, he's, uh, uh, and he takes drugs. It's all true, and mm -hmm. he does his things, but he doesn't assault her. And so when you're looking at this re repetitive situation again and again, and what happens in that comfort level that occurs, this is what is, it keeps a dysfunctional, toxic, marriage going because each person is bringing in their own pathology. I mean, she is really a psychopath. She, she's violent and abusive. She has outbursts. She's probably bipolar as well, mm. uh, but she asks for forgiveness and love and, and don't leave uh, right. while she's pushing him to leave. So she's doing both back and forth. And um, really she's calling him names and throwing things at him. She threw that bottle of vodka, I think it was, a full bottle of vodka at him, and it, he it, it, uh, uh, took uh, off a piece of his uh, tip of his finger. Uh, she's, uh, she's given him uh, marks on his face. And so she has continued 
this kind of emotional dysfunction uh, because of her past and mm-hmm. what she thinks is uh, the way to show love. This is her way. Otherwise, it's boring. There's no passion. You know, negative passion is passion. Yeah. Right. I mean, that, that reminds me of you know, an incident with my son back when he was, I think he was probably five. I mean, he was very young and I was, I was going to school at the time. And anytime I had a paper or a, a test coming up, his behavior went into the toilet because I wasn't paying, I wasn't giving him positive attention and he would take negative attention over no attention. And, you know, I mean, of course he was five. But but we see this repeatedly in, in people because, again, it's what they learned growing up. And, um, you know, it's, it's interesting as, as, as relationship professionals, you see either the exact behavior repeated across the generations or 180 degrees because people only see, well, it's this or it's this. And they just keep repeating these patterns and wondering, you know, even though they swore, you know, like, you know, um, Scarlett O'Hara in the middle of Gone with the Wind, you know, I'll never be hungry again. It's like they swear I will not be part of these relationships, but then they find themselves in them again. Well, you know, it's emotional. You can't help it. When you're scripted and you're rehearsed and you know what you're going to say, but when somebody is, is emotionally affecting you, it's like people when they're working, they have different character traits as when they're home. I know when people come to see me, if there's no emotion, or there's no passion, is much worse than if there's negative passion, because at least there's some heat, uh, right. there's something going on. So that's, that's very important to know that, yes, you can be, affect your partner more than anyone else. You really c- can hurt that person. And the problem is, when that happens, if you can get out of it, and you can work it through, and you cannot continue it and break it, Mm -hmm. then you have a chance. Otherwise, when you get stuck, and there are couples really who like to hurt each other, and they find ways that whenever somebody says something, they find the negative to criticize them. They're Mm -hmm. looking for it. And, of course, if you look for something, you find it. So that's the way that they function in their life. They're bickering. They don't even know they're doing it anymore. So this is not unusual. When we're talking about Johnny Depp, we're talking about – the way he presents himself, his demeanor. He's a, really someone who's an introvert. Mm-hmm. Um, he, he is somebody who does not, uh, he really lashes out on himself. Uh, he gives himself the toxicity by the mm-hmm. drinking and the drugs. It calms him. Um, he is able to handle the abuse better this way. So he positions himself for abuse. And this is not unusual. A lot of people who take alcohol, do, do that so they can cope. It's right. not because they're partying or having fun. So we're seeing no, a side of him. Yeah, they're, they're self-medicating. self-medicating. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we're seeing a side of him with this domestic abuse from Amber. So far, we're still waiting to see. Uh, there was a quote here that said, I did not punch you, I hit you. And I'm thinking, why is that any better? <laughs> I, it's like, okay, semantics, right? You know, it's like, well, I mean, and, and, me? and, one of, and one of the things that's very interesting about this particular case is that it kind of yes. flips the, the, the standard, and it, and, it, and it can be very difficult for people to accept that it's female-on-male aggression yes. and when, when, the quote, when the norm is, is the flip. Um, so this is Happily Ever Absolutely. After. It's just the beginning on webtalkradio.net. I'm Leslie Dorries, and I'm talking with psychoanalytic therapist and research psychologist Dr. Frieda Birnbaum about how toxic or abusive relationships develop. And maybe you're wondering if you're in one, or maybe you're just wanting less drama and more safety and acceptance in your marriage, but don't know how to change things. Well, you're not alone, but there are things that you can do to create a happy, a happier, more loving marriage, and I can help. I invite you to get in touch with me and schedule your free, no obligation, five-star relationship call. You can reach me by phone at area code 919-924-0463. Again, that's 919-924-0463. Or you can reach me by email at leslie, L-E-S-L-I, at foundationscoachingnc.com. That's F-O-U-N-D-A-T-I-O-N-S. 
coaching n is in nancy c is in charlie.com and i want to get back to talking about um toxic relationships yeah because joy we want to talk about that but um dr frida are there warning signs that people should be looking for that signal that they're either in a toxic relationship or that they're potentially in a toxic relationship well absolutely don't think because you see someone who has difficulties that you're going to change that person i mean women are known for that they love to take the bad guy and make him right. good because right. they're they're so special that he's going to do this for them the right. problem is they keep repeating it in different ways and after a while, the woman becomes a social worker in a marriage, and the guy acts out because she lets him get away with it, feeling she can make those changes. Mm -hmm. So right from the beginning, you have to be able to accept who that person is in front of you. And then maybe if that person's willing to work on it or go to therapy, which is a lot of work, mm -hmm. then there's a possibility. But don't think you can do this on your own. It never works, and it just creates more stress, more problems, and often divorce as well. So that's the one thing to look for, out for. Uh, if someone has toxicity uh, or dysfunction, upsets you, when you walk away feeling worse than better, yes. uh, you know that there's something going on, what just happened. Uh, if you feel that you're the caretaker of the relationship, that's not good either. A relationship has to be back and forth, supporting each other, maybe at different times. Right. But still, that rhythm of knowing that when the other person does well, you feel better because you care about that other person. So it shouldn't be a, a relationship where there's narcissism and there's a divide of opinion. You should be on the same page about your future. Uh, you should be able to compensate for each other. You should be able to work and make uh, up for the differences with each other. So this is having a relationship does take work. You can't just say, okay, we're together now. We can forget about everything. That's not true. <laughs> so there are many things. Uh, I wish that was the case. Right. I've been there. Yes, um, I believe, take it from me. It's not true at all. Every day there's something else going on. Right. But, still, but still, you know, we sort of... Uh, persevere if you feel that the marriage is important enough now another thing to, t to think about is when you see that person to know the history of that person uh -huh. uh, what are his parents like uh, is there divorce in the family uh -huh. uh, did they work on their marriage uh, what about their friends do the, are their friends saying good things about them uh, you know, if someone says, oh, she's a drama queen, heads up, you know, you're going to be up for, uh, for a ride. Uh, mm -hmm. They're not joking. Right. You know, and also uh, be aware of the reputation just in general of this person, how this person has been able to have friendships, um, their past history uh, with other people. What have they gone through? If they blame everybody for their problems, if they're victims, well, mm -hmm. guess what? You're going to be next in line. So these things are important. There's nothing wrong with knowing the person first. And the most important thing, the one thing, is you have to be emotionally healthy first. If you're not, you're going to look for the wrong person. You're going to try to look for someone to make you feel better. Nobody can do that for you. You have to be in a good place and find someone who adds to who you are already, not who makes up for what you don't have. Right, and I and I love that because one of uh, one of the lines, movie lines that makes me crazy is the line from Jerry Maguire, "You complete me." It's like, no, 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 you have to be a complete human being before you get into the relationship. You should have written the producer and told them <laughs> they don't know this. You have to let them know but stop that. the truth here. Well, I mean, yes, and it sounds romantic. It sounds so great. Right. You know, the other day, I'm watching these uh, shows, uh, Married Something, uh, I don't know, Single and I don't know what it is. Oh, Married right. at First Sight. Oh, gosh. Married, married at First Sight. Oh. Have you seen that one? <laughs> I, right, I, watched, so. I watched a few when it first came out, and then it's like, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> oh, my God. I was up till one in the morning, so it's addictive. <laughs> so anyway, so I see, I'm seeing them in the beginning. I'm like, not a bad idea. These people are fixed up. 
Mm-hmm. You know, it's all on paper. It's practical. They even mm-hmm. fix up the, the, they even connect the, the way they look, you know, right. the, 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 it's really so well done. And then the next segment, it's already, I don't know if we can do this. I don't know if this is good. So my point about that, and I'm saying, oh, no, you know, here we're just so romantic. The guy mm-hmm. gets down on his knee and he, uh, whatever, uh, proposes. And then, you know, life sets in and that's the problem. Life is not perfect. And people come to me for happiness. There's no such thing. It's a comfort right. level. That's what life is all about. And so we're looking for happiness. My mother used to say, and I'm getting off track here. <laughs> my mother used to say, what, you know, like, why are people coming to you every week? What do they have to talk about? You know, she was happy. She had food on the table. That was right. about it. And so uh, I think we're looking for more and always wanting to see something better than what we actually have that we can really make it good for us at the moment as well. I'm finished with my lecture, but go ahead. <laughs> well, I mean, it's interesting because, you know, this is, this is one of those things that, you know, I, you know, I talk about this all the time is that people don't, the general population doesn't really understand what marriage is or, or even no. you know, my, my, my latest thing is nobody has to take a relationship 101 class and everybody should because we don't, we don't realize and, and what we're bringing to the table. And no, I need to put it out there. Nobody deserves to be made to feel less than, to be physically hurt, to be emotionally hurt. Nobody deserves that. But if that's happening, then there is the question, what am I contributing to that? And that's a really difficult thing because, again, it's not about blaming the victim. It's like, please, I, I need people to understand that is not what it's about. But, I mean, I had a client many, many years ago whose husband used to cuss her out in front of me. And I said to her, I said, why is it okay for him to call you these names? And she said, it's not. I said, well, he's been doing it for 12 years, so he's gotten the impression that it's okay. And this brings up the question that I want to talk about, because can a toxic relationship be turned around? And if it can, how does one do that? Well, that's a very important question, and the reality is that as children, uh, we were brought up, uh, girls were brought up uh, to be more subservient. Not, that's more in the past. Right. But still, it still continues still to there. happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's still there. And, uh, and we're inclined to go in that direction uh, automatically. And we have to be very careful when a girl uh, grows up, she's uh, recognized for her beauty, and a male is recognized for his accomplishments. But it's, it's changing more. Uh, but because of that, uh, the roles have been that women have been, have been taught to put up with uh, this kind of abuse. Uh, and it could be just emotional abuse. It doesn't have to be a uh, physical abuse. When you think about that and you think and you go over what was wrong but by seeing people like yourself and saying, wait a minute, why am I doing this? Why am I repeating this pattern? Mm-hmm. What was wrong and defining that they have themselves have to define what happened to them. And once that awareness comes, then it's not integrated in their behavior today. But that's what we need to do. We need to go backwards and see how we were conditioned uh, to behave a certain way. And girls that were promoted by their fathers, by the way, and fathers have more to do with the outcome of their children than mothers do, by the way. Interesting. And, uh, yes. Yeah. And uh, the fathers, uh, if the father sees a daughter as somebody who is accomplished, she will feel more powerful uh, in her life than somebody who is uh, more of a subservient type of individual. So it starts how a a girl is educated, because Mm -hmm. education makes a huge difference of Mm self-esteem, and then and I did research on this, and this is really off script, but whatever. But <laughs> then what happens is that um, that is transferred into the home. If a woman has a career or high status career, a man would treat her differently without even realizing it than if she did not have a career. Mm. And, and women have significantly different type of um, relationships. Now, 
getting back to Amber yeah. and how she feels about herself and her voice, that she has to be heard by screaming mm-hmm. and throwing things. Mm-hmm. It shows that she doesn't feel that she's being heard because women, they're called hysterical right. because hysteria it comes from a part of not being heard. And uh, so we have to question Amber's past and her own confidence and who she is, that she has to struggle so hard and fight so hard to have any kind of recognition. Because as soon as a Johnny Depp says, I'm leaving, she's mm-hmm. begging him as if, She's uh, she's so unaware that she did anything wrong at all. Please stay. Don't leave. And I'm thinking, duh. <laughs> why why would he want to stay? Don't well, you get it? But that's but that's that's the cycle. I mean, and that's one of the things that gets people yeah. trapped. Is you know we get this. Um, you know, I talked about it a little bit on on some other shows about what what we call the the power cycle or the cycle of abuse where. You know, things things reach ahead. There's this there's this blow up, whether it's physical or just verbal and emotional. And you know, then and then there's this honeymoon phase where you know there's all these promises made about I'll never do it again, and I love you, and please don't leave me. And then it starts it ramps up again. And um, one of the things that I learned early in my career when I worked for a domestic violence organization is, you know, is two, two things that are, are really pay attention to. If you ever use either one of these expressions, the person is like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, or I have to walk on eggshells. And either one of those should be big, red, flashing warning signs that something is off. Um, because Absolutely, he, absolutely. Yes. And another one, I'm just going to interrupt, if that person makes you cry, uh, if that person makes you cry, that's a red flag. Because right away, right, he or she, see, I'm going to he, but mm-hmm. she or he could be hurting you intentionally oh, yeah. and trying to wear you down. It's a psychological tactic. Right. You have I to was, be careful of that. Yeah, I was just reading a, a um, you know, advice columnist just this past weekend that was, you know, basically this, this woman said something really horrendous to her partner with the intention of hurting him and then trying to figure and, and, and she was writing it about how do I fix this <laughs> and I was very it's like and the columnist was like well first you need to figure out why you thought that was okay <laughs> and but, but yeah, this is, what, this is yeah. I mean this is what we do and you know there is this expression about hurt people hurt people but we've got to stop it I mean yes people are hurt I get that we have, you know, the whole attachment theory. We can go into all the psychobabble, which I try not to do on the show. But there's, you know, there's a lot of stuff that goes into it. Very, you know, the, the, the home lives that people come from aren't always, you know, sunshine and roses. And there's an impact to that. And, you know, owning our part in it, which is always the hard part because it's so much easier to look at my partner and go, well, they're the ones doing A, B, and C, so Absolutely. I get to do X, you know, Y, and Z. That's so true. You know, you have to fix yourself first. And not only that, things happen and we're pent up. Uh, somebody's going to say something to us that we don't feel comfortable saying something. Well, guess what? We feel comfortable with our partner, so we let it out in that partner. We don't even mm-hmm. know why, but we mm-hmm. feel better. Because of something, so we have to stay in the moment, and we have to know what's going on uh, that really upset us. And when we're talking about Amber and Johnny Depp, you know, Amber Heard and Johnny, they're carrying this baggage of hurt with yeah. them, and their comfort level with each other is such that they can hurt each other and feel better. So you're doing that at somebody else's expense, right. and you're letting go of all your garbage. What really happens is you're going to keep doing that each time. That's what they're doing. That's in the, you answered your question. What keeps people together? Yeah. It's that the moment of feeling that aha moment, I feel better right now so something else comes. And then they keep repeating that, thinking that this is their cure. So, you know, our parents didn't read the books. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's dysfunction in, in most relationships. Uh, and people uh, who are, uh, really work hard and stay in a marriage 
uh, for many years have also had dysfunction. Yeah. But doesn't mean that you shouldn't stay. It doesn't mean it can't get better if you work on it. And I think every couple should go to therapy before they get married. And, you know, I even thought about uh, emotion. Why do we have this prenup contract? It's mm-hmm. about money. It seems so crass. What about right. an emotional contract <laughs> where people sit down? I'm not kidding. I'm thinking. Oh, no, I'm right there with you. Right there with Someone's you. Someone's going to steal my idea, but whatever. So you sit down together in front of the therapist. And you talk about, do you want to live closer to your in-laws? <laughs> you know, <laughs> do you want to spend money? How do you want to spend money? That's a, that's a biggie, right. number one. Right. How, how about kids? What kind of life do you want to have? What kind of vacations do you want to take? <laughs> All these things that couples argue about, mm-hmm. you know, from day to day, that's what we need to have oh. so we can have peace of mind and good moments in our lives. We need that badly today. We really oh. do. There's enough going on around us. Oh, I, I yeah. you know, because I, I, I frequently will, will, will get questioned about, you know, Either who should who should get you know relationship work or when should they get it? I said everybody and as early as possible um, because we, possible. because you know, we don't we don't understand we don't fully understand the impact of our own past and because you know that's what we grew up in whatever whatever happened in our family of origin and in the in the four walls we grew up in was normal. And we, yeah. you know, and we repeat it without even knowing that we're doing it. And then when we're trying That's to combine so- our life with somebody else who brings their own stuff, you know, we're trying but to figure is- this out. And it isn't about, you know, yeah. you know, somebody doing premarital work saying, don't get married. It's here's what, here's, here's, here's what you're looking at. Here's, here's what we know here. How do you guys want to set this up? And, you know, most of it, most, most people are, are being, you know, doing marriage by the seat of their pants, which we don't know what they yeah. don't know what they're doing. Yeah. My mother also, I was, we look to our parents, right? Yeah. I look to my mother when I had big questions, like, should I marry him? Don't ask me, don't blame me. I don't <laughs> want you to blame me later, but the littlest thing she micromanaged me. So I married somebody who micromanages. Because yeah. I said, oh, he must be good for me. This is what I got from my mother. Right. And she knew what she, what she didn't. Right. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's sad because the kids look to the parents' behavior. Right. They're the role models, not what you say. And then we start all over again. Right. And we're trapped. And a lot of people that are listening to, uh, to just get back for a minute to what's his name, Johnny Deb and, and uh, Amber Heard, they're listening because they want to know themselves. Mm-hmm. Uh, can they relate to what's going on? Is this something that they'll find some answers for themselves in some way? Uh, so it's not just voyeurism or trying to for entertainment. Uh, they're taking this seriously. Uh, they're taking uh, the dysfunction that we all have and the way we were brought up. My mother used to say to me, a man is like a broom. It's good to have one at the door. And I'm thinking, that's it? That's what you look like. That's what you look. I know. That's what you look I know. Sometimes for. you just kind of go, "Oh my gosh!" But anyway, oh my well, God, Frida, are you kidding me, Doctor Frida? Thank I you so I much in some way. For, for being on the show. And can you tell people where they can learn more about what you do? Because um, I know that you you do a lot of this work, um, and and it might be really helpful for people to be able to tap into that. Yes. Well, you know, I have uh, my podcast, the Doctor Frida Show. And it's mostly about leaders in the field. I've always been impressed by people, how they got, they got to where they were going. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm also on a radio talk show a couple times a week. It's called uh, Coraline Show, Coraline Report with Dr. Frida. Um, and I analyze what's going on in Ukraine, having a lot mm-hmm. of fun with the profiles of those people. Yeah. And, uh, and and that's about it. And then I have my practice. It's just all the way in New Jersey, so no one's going to be interested. <laughs> and uh, so let's forget about that. I wrote several books. One about uh, Life Begins at 60, uh, which actually has something to do with how getting older is, is really fantastic. And uh, it's it's better than being younger, I feel. And it's something yeah, we, to look forward to. Yeah. So I just want- we what? 
I just want people to know that marriage should actually be a place where you feel loved, accepted, and supported. It should ah, not be a place so where you have to walk on eggshells. And each of you play a role in what your relationship looks like and what you will accept. If there's something that needs to change, then my question is, what steps are you willing to take to make that happen? And I hope one of the steps you'll take is to continue listening to this show. And until next week, stay loving. <laughs>